I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and it's part two of a dogfight battle between the LG Nexus 5 or Google Nexus 5 and the LG G2, LG's flagship device on US carriers. They're both made by LG but they have very different marketing strategies, one being predominantly marketed by Google, one being marketed by LG. Which one will win? It's part two of a dogfight battle and it starts right now. It's part two of a dogfight battle between the LG Nexus 5 and the LG G2, two brothers in a lot of ways, but being marketed through very different channels. This is Google's flagship device. This is obviously an Android device that is LG's flagship device, but they're marketed very differently. This one though, one of the first Nexus devices to be widely available on carriers. It's available on Sprint or will be available on Sprint, AT&T and T-Mobile. So a lot of different opportunity here, or at least I should say, let me rephrase that, available for use on those networks and through some of those carrier stores. So it's nice to have some of that resale support, even though it's not quite the full package like maybe you would get with a G2 or a Note 3 or you know one, for example, where it's available on multiple carriers and in store. So that's you know something to keep in mind. But where the value comes into play with the Nexus 5, the price point unlocked, this sucker is 350 bucks for the 16 gigabyte model. $399 for the 32 gigabyte model. So really a great value unlocked. Compare it to this on AT&T's website, for the, and obviously this has 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Unlocked, or I should say at least full retail, $575. So you can see the price difference. My question in part two, at least someone I'm gonna to try to answer is, is it worth the added cost to get the software benefits you get with the G2, or perhaps the battery benefits you get with the G2, or even the slightly larger display you get with the G2? We'll find out in part two of the dogfight. But before I get too far into that, I wanna thank our partners at Best Buy Mobile. They hook us up with devices like these two for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these, you'll walk out working. They'll make sure you're set up, you're ready to go, you're rocking and rolling with your email set up, your hangout set up, your contact set up, and more, thanks to the boys in blue. So let's jump into it right now, pick up part two where we left off, and let's talk a little bit about the software because you do get a very vanilla experience over here. One thing I've often said in videos, the Nexus brand, just as a combination of the way the marketing is, or is played out to date, the way the distribution works on the Nexus side, it hasn't been intended, at least maybe up until now, in a minuscule way for mainstream consumers. I mean, you look at this, it's like very few people have seen these in carrier stores up until well, right now with the Nexus 5 when it's rolling out to Sprint and T-Mobile. So just the way that this has been distributed, the marketing plan for the Nexus line and the Nexus 5 as opposed to something like the G2, which receives a huge amount of support from the carriers, a huge push in the retail storefront. So you know, there's a lot of stuff at play here, be it spiffs from the retail store. I know you probably don't want to hear a marketing conversation, but this is something to keep in mind as to why one's successful and one's not successful, maybe in retail, but you see the Nexus 5 being very successful from a developer standpoint or a tech enthusiast standpoint. That's one of the reasons. I mean, they're, they're, they're marketed through different channels and very different channels, and that's something that plays a role in the overall process of selling these devices. So the Nexus 5 is going to be available Sprint and is going to be available at T-Mobile and the retail store. So that's a great push for the Nexus line of devices, but still you see a ton of marketing around the Galaxy S4 and the Note 3 and the G2 and all these devices that are supported via Planogram and the AT&T store, for example, you walk in, there's dedicated planogram space for the G2. So there's a lot of factors at play here, and I don't want to get too bogged down in the marketing talk, but that's one of the reasons why. Now that said, the Nexus line has gotten increasingly more consumer-friendly. KitKat is one of the most consumer-friendly versions of vanilla Android I've worked with, but still, I look at it and I say, okay, there aren't as many value adds in the software out of the box, and it's all about the software package in 2013 and me, what you get out of the box for the mainstream consumer. And keep in mind, you and I are not mainstream consumers. We're tech enthusiasts, so I'm not talking to us, I'm talking to the mainstream consumer here but it's nice to have some of the value adds you get on the G2. Combine that with the fact that obviously the G2 has a larger battery and we'll take a look here at the camera while I'm loading that up. A larger battery which we'll talk about in just a bit but I'm going to load up camera here and then I'm going to load up camera up here as well. Now 8 megapixel camera on the Nexus 5 with some basic image editing options. Over here you've got a 13 megapixel camera. Both have optical image stabilization and you're going to notice some differences here in the overall look and feel. Very vanilla Android look and feel there in terms of the camera app itself. Over here you've got a bunch of different modes as well. You've got shot and clear, dynamic tone, panorama, the dual camera option which utilizes the front and rear facing camera to take as you would expect. A dual shot, you can see me right there talking, talking, talking. And then of course the mode as well. We can go back and take a look at some of the other options here. Dual camera, time catch slot, 
intelligent auto sports and night. So you look at this and if you're going into this thinking I need a device with a great camera and a lot of different modes for my lifestyle, this could be a unit for you. That said, this camera is fantastic and keeping in mind the value here of the price point of the Nexus 5, starting at 350 unlocked, it really is a nice unit. The camera works incredibly well for me. I haven't had any issues. A little bit of a shutter lag on this device, but overall image quality has been fine on this unit. I mean, you can see here, it takes a pretty clear picture to me. It takes a little bit of time to focus in, but once the picture is taken, the, the image actually looks good as far as I'm concerned. So we can go here, for example, and take a look and zoom in. And you can see very clear all around, even zoomed in optical. Actually, let me back that up. I was going to show you this 13 megapixel camera, optical image stabilization, all those good tech specs. But you can see here, very clear image quality here. And then you can edit from the application itself. So I can go in here, for example, and click, go to edit. I can come down here. Actually, I didn't have to click edit. I'll go down to photo editor and then Google Photos is out of the box here. Well, I can change it up in kind of an Instagram style here, make it vintage, I can add a border, I can make it a modern border or a view border. I can save that picture as is. Let's go back, hit save, and you can see that boom, that picture is saved to the camera. It's processing the image right now, and it's ready to rock and roll. Now over here, snap picture, we'll use the Nexus 5. And let's go ahead and get that focused in, there we go. And I'll bring it up. We'll take a look and you can see really a clear beautiful image all around here and you've got some nice editing options here as well. Let's go in here and take a look at what we've got. Auto fix, fill light, highlight, shadows, lots of different choices to play around with and really make the picture your own. Black and white, all the different color options as well, not to mention cropping, straighten, ro straightening, rotating and more. So really nice image quality there. Let's take a quick look at Quadrant Standard. I always paraphrase this by saying that Quadrant Standard is not indicative of day-to-day -day performance, but a lot of you ask me in every video to do Quadrant Standard, so I continue to do it in videos. While it's running, I'll talk a little bit about overall processing power. Both of these devices are exceptionally fast in day-to-day -day performance. I don't have any one or either one rather of these devices where I'm thinking, you know, to myself, one's incredibly fast, one's incredibly slow. These are both very fast all around in day-to-day -day use. No lag whatsoever on both of these units, but you know, very quick and very zippy all around. The biggest difference for me is battery life. I get a pretty solid battery number out of the G2. With moderate to heavy use for me, I get anywhere between, I'd say 13 and 15 hours. The more I use it and the more it gets adjusted to my use pattern. Over here, I'm getting like, on a bad day, anywhere from eight hours to about 11, if I'm lucky, on this device is what I'm seeing on the Nexus 5. So keep that in mind, both are non-removable batteries. If you're a battery, a road warrior rather, you know, you need that battery, the G2 could be the unit for you. So 12, 000, excuse me, 19,248 over here, 7,519 over on the Nexus 5. So a speedy device all around, but don't take that with more than maybe a grain of salt or maybe even two grains of salt, but still very zippy all around, no lag whatsoever on either one of these units. Now I also want to talk a little bit about widgets as well. We'll take a look here at the widgets here and you can see stock Android widgets as you would expect in combination with LG's widgets, whereas over here it's all stock. And the overall look and feel is a little bit different on both. So you can see here the widgets. We'll roll through and just kind of see what we've got here. Digital clock and then over here you've got your digital clock as well. So very similar widgets despite being an older version of Android if you will over on the LG G2. Now again we'll take a look also this is something that changed so we'll take a look in KitKat versus Android 4.4 versus Android 4.2. You can see LG's user interface running here, call logs, contacts, all your tabs up here, and you can see what it looks like over on this unit as well. We'll back out a little bit so you can see recent calls, I can see favorites, and then I've got my recent calls down here as well, and I can add the keypad just by doing that. So a little bit of a different look and feel. You got blue borders down here at the bottom, and then over here you got kind of an LG look and feel with gray and with the green call button as you would expect. So very similar to previous LG devices, the Optimus G Pro, etc. So we'll take a look at contacts, just comparing one application to the other. You can see, again, a very stock look and feel over here. Stephen Williams will bring that up just so you can see what they look like side by side. So again, LG's user interface. Customization is key over here, though. One of the things I like, for example, is the ability to change the icons. You can change that around. There's a lot of options to customize. So I can change the icon if I want to, make it my own. I can change the animations if I want to. And not even to mention the fact that it's very unique in the fact that it's got a power button and the volume rocker on the back instead of on the sides. This is very easy to hold. I love the location of the power button. It does not activate my pocket. Very cool and it works perfectly ergonomically 
with the way my fingers sit on the device. So all these little things combined to make for a great experience on the G2. The biggest problem is walking into a carrier store, and we saw this in the press releases for the Nexus 5. Let's say the average consumer walks into a Sprint and says, you know, I'm looking at the Nexus 5 versus the G2. To my knowledge, I believe Sprint's pricing the Nexus 5, and I could be wrong, I need to go back and look at the release, but it's either 149 or 199. So even though this is 350 full retail, they're pricing it at around the same price as you could get an LG G2 for. So when a consumer walks in and sees that, they think to themselves, why would I spend the difference or why would I spend the same amount of money for the Nexus 5 when I can get the G2. Now, if you're buying Unlock, there's obviously a case to make about the Nexus 5. And heck, if you're buying it through the Google Play Store, there's obviously an option or obviously a, a say there. But still, you know, the carrier model is kind of hurting this, in my opinion, at least on the two-year agreement standpoint. So front touch buttons can be changed. Like I said, screen off effect. This is one of my favorites. Change it to black hole. And then you can see when I power it down, the black hole opens and closes double tap to activate the screen. So both are great devices. The value add front is great on the G2. The price point's fantastic on the Nexus 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> on the Nexus 5, and I find it to be incredibly useful in day-to-day -day use. It's one of the best Nexus. It actually is the best Nexus to date with 4G LTE connectivity. The winner of the dogfight is the one that wins all around for a little bit of everything, and that's the G2. Battery life is better on the G2. The screen size is ideal on the G2, and some of these unique features, personalization, and then, of course, the location of the buttons are great. And combined with the fact that when you walk into the store, I understand that this is 350 full retail. When you walk into the store, you see, at least in the carrier stores, a very similar price point. So I think that's going to confuse consumers, and you know, all around is going to make them go to a G2 because there's more of a value in the software, more of a value in the battery life, more of a value in the screen size. But you know what, if you're looking for a device, it's unlocked, you broke your phone, you need a quick replacement, or heck, you just want a nice Android device, Android 4.4, and the Nexus 5, both fantastic, and they work really well together on the Nexus 5. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for more. Let me know what dogfight you want to see next. Twitter, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.